the business report you're going to have a couple sections you're going to have an executive summary it's going to be three to four paragraphs or so uh, for each paragraph you're going to say uh, summarize the chapter summarize the case and the third paragraph is going to be summarize your opinions recommendations next section of the business report is just going to be a figure chart as well as explanation as needed so if you're making assumptions within the chart make sure you state those i'm just kind of go through what they would be and then lastly the third section is any information you didn't cover about the case that you need to further elaborate on. So those are the three main components of the business case. Um, like I so said, you have a lot of flexibility for how you go about it. Just make sure that you do a good job on it. Um, of course, the whole thing you're going to present to the class. So you're going to have slides for that. Slides that kind of outline what you want to have. Um, you can have more than that. Make sure that the slides you can present between five and ten minutes. Um, then apart from that, the whole presentation be prepared with questions. Kind of outline some of the stuff inside of the assignment for what sorts of questions you would need to have. Uh, make sure that you're able to facilitate a discussion. For those of you in the audience, make sure that you're ready to answer questions. Uh, if you answer questions, I will be sure to give you the two points. You can either do that via Teams. Um, you can basically speak on Teams if you'd like, or you can do it face to face. Um, so you have two options there. Um, those are the two ways to get into credit today. But apart from that, uh, that's pretty much how it goes. So whoever is doing the presentation will make sure to not go over 25 minutes. Any questions? Uh, the minimum is about 20 minutes. Uh, if you go 18, I'm not going to count off or anything, but don't go like 15 or 10 minutes or anything. Does that make sense? Any other questions? So like I say, uh, don't worry too much about, you know, if no one answers your questions that you have, I'll answer. You don't have to worry about that, but I want everyone else to answer questions instead of me answering questions. Does that make sense? And I think you probably don't want to hear me answer every single question either. It's pretty boring. So we don't want to have boring. We want to have fun and exciting. So at the end of their presentation, I'm going to give them a critique. I worked out a deal with both uh, Sam and Ben to where uh, I gave them a grade already. And in exchange for that, uh, they allowed me to say what they did well on and what they could have improved upon. Now, this is to be beneficial to everyone in the class because you know how you're going to be graded. You know what I'm expecting. Uh, you've seen an example, and you'll also see the business report. I'll go through what they did well on on that and what they could have improved on. So I uh, certainly hope that everyone pays attention today and uh, certainly keeps this in mind for how they'll be graded. Uh, any other questions? Well, I look forward to hearing them. I'll let uh, Sam and Ben take it away. I 
I don't with me. I'm sorry. I had one, but I lost the little uh, USB end to it, so it's not useful. Make sure you speak up, because uh, I'm only using my laptop mic, so. But I'm good. Uh, well, it's Teams, but yeah. Hi, my name's Sam with the Information systems is a large contributor to how big companies like Google uh, stay successful, or what makes them pop. So, other um, examples like Walmart, they have basically perfected the management of their inventory and with their using technology that can manage the information. Walmart is actually in very twenty fifteen the largest. They have the largest information technology infrastructure of anyone. It's actually been toppled by Amazon three years later, 2018. So just to clarify, all the numbers I'm speaking today is based off of Other examples like how Walmart uses the information system is uh, their data mining. So, so the, just the definition of the data mining helps Walmart find patterns that can be used to predict what customers buy and how much stock they put together. You know, like during Christmas season, they automat automatically know get this much of this stuff over Christmas morning, Christmas, whatever it is that's going through season. Same goes for their sales. You know, that's what during the summer if they're window loading. Over inventory, but they all have a time that they follow. Because from previous years and years before that, they know exactly what to do. You have inventory that doesn't move, you have inventory that basically takes up space, you have to have people work on that space, and then they have to constantly move that, and it's taking up space and time and money. You have inventory that doesn't move. It's very important for business, especially as large as Walmart. Have, you know, be running a peak efficiency because Walmart, they are trying to get as much as they can of their margins as possible. That's, you know, that's what sets them apart from people like Sears or people that have already closed at this point. They can't keep up. Um, the thing is, like, you know that um, even though you've never made an account with them, you can make you want to give them, giving them your card. Your card has their name, it has the last four digits of your Some of you see ads on, on Instagram, you see it on Facebook, you see it on Large companies like all the time. Because they have, you know, they're competitive with them. Another thing with uh, 
all the data mining and like information coming from stuff with everything in the that's sold, they have realized that fruit and fruit strawberry popcorn sell seven times as high, like seven percent more, or seven times more during right before any type of person go you know get injected in the They have realized that for some reason, along with milk, bread, and I guess popcorn, these are the main top sellers when it comes to right before a hurricane. So I don't know if you guys ever noticed. You go at the end of the checkout line in Walmart and you notice a lot of weird kind of items at the front. Like most of it's candy, you know, like snacks like these, but all charts being in the very front, you would think that would be the material house. The reason that's there is because specifically for the reasons when they had hurricane season, they already knew that it was going to sell, you know, so they already put it in the front aisle. They put it, you know, where the, call it, um, impulse aisle. You walk in there, you're about to buy your stuff, you look out, and you put it in, and the envelope off. So those are things that they put in there just to get you to buy just a little bit more. Because Walmart's entire building is specifically made for you to um, buy as much as you can. You come in there with something in mind, and you walk past everything else, and you end up getting more than what you originally came in there for. That's just one example. Another example. Walmart, they don't mind. There's one specific cookie brand that's popular. So, as my father Sanders said, Walmart is the cookie brand that's in the entry. So, they want to get by it. Yes, sir. But, do you also know that out of 4,700 churches, members home school members, not to see it from the school, that actually, Walmart had no choice but to point all the shelves towards. With four thousand, that's actually four thousand seven hundred thirty-five in the entire in the entire nation. They were able to find two specific stores that didn't sell a single cookie, even though every other they just immediately go up the chain. So as soon as they found that these two stores were not selling, they immediately investigated, found out that the second store they found out that they were stocking like overstocked. Basically, led them to be positioned in the bad area. As soon as they moved those parts, all gone. Immediately sold. These are the type of things, like examples of how information systems are like inventory management, just, just a small portion of what we know about the one that is so important when it comes to a business, going to give you an edge. Like, there's no way a single human would be able to just sit there and count how many cookies are being sold in every single store in the United States and realize, hey, you can't make it. This is the type of stuff that, you know, even though the machines can't do everything, this is the simple and like, um, not the most like simple things that the computer can do that can put a business ahead like over mom and pop stores that close down, like small businesses. Before I move on to the next slide, can anyone here guess how much Walmart or like a kind of a big average? But how let's let's just Say Walmart because I know that. Um, how much Walmart spends a year in their infrastructure? Like their technology to be able to scan barcodes, everything. Like how much they spend on just their technology alone, their research every year to make sure that they stay ahead. I want to make a guess. Billion? Billion? Billion dollars? I have no idea. Three billion. Billion? Uh, Beckett guessed four billion. Four billion? Any more guesses? Well, you guys know, just in 2016, they had spent over $10.5 billion just into their infrastructure. And this, this is, a, I'm not talking about payroll, I'm not talking about putting in a building, nothing, just the technology to make sure that they have the best resources in order to make sure they are 
running at the most peak efficiency. Uh, today, the Wells Fargo Bank of America put it in ATT in every single one of these key banks. Now, like I said, these numbers are no longer accurate today. But just in 2015, they spent $10.5 billion. Last time I checked, Amazon in 2018, they spent 13.6. The amount of money that these companies will invest in their, their, just their technology and their, in their in trading system is, I can't even fathom that number. I can't imagine $10.5 billion in a warehouse and sending it into new barcodes and iPads and other layers that they use. E servers somewhere. Arkansas, where well, Walmart was founded, I don't know. It's just crazy to me. All right. Uh, you got discussion questions for it, don't you? That's good, that's good. So, uh, you guys in the audience, of course, can answer. Also, if you're watching on Teams, I've got you unmuted, so you can also speak up and answer. So, either way you guys want to speak. If, if people interrupt each other, that's okay. We'll just, one person will speak, then the next person will speak. It's not a big deal at all. So. Well, that's fine. I mean, just, just you know, whatever uh, discussion questions you have, we'll go through them. Gotcha. So, uh, just another question here. People perspective wise, how how it deals with people. How do you guys think is the benefit of having this this type of technology? Investing all this money. In this what do you think guys propose that? Uh, what do you think? What do you think? I think we got one one to speak. Yeah, I got one. Um, I was going to say on y'all's pop tart to hurricane perspective, it allows them to stock up on certain items that they know they're going to sell out on because especially being Walmart and a lot of people, you know, looking to them to help them out there in these situations with them having the extra stuff stock that they have, they're going to be more friendly and more likely to go back to Walmart because they're like, you know, Walmart took care of us during a disaster, even though it's just pop tarts, which is kind of funny, but since they were there to take care of them, they're more likely to go back because they feel more friendly. Uh, shopping at Walmart, knowing that they'll take care of them. Um, a little bit unrelated, but I had a friend that was in fashion, and he does the same thing. That I mean, like stores like Dillard's, they all do the same thing, but there, there's a very specific way that you're supposed to organize a store. Like, I don't know if you guys have been to a, a bad laid out store. You walk in there in Walmart, you immediately know where, general gist of where something is. Like, if you're, you have no idea where um, tomato sauce is, but you know, you know, at least you see one food over there. Then you see, um, like, hands, obviously, it's right there. Go towards the bread aisle, maybe that's where you can find spaghetti, and then that's where you get the pasta, then you get, like, the pan. They all, it is very, it's all very specific to it out for it. a person to be able to get in there, see what they want, possibly get them to buy more what they need. They spend money on having to have a person. What the person asks for them to help. And you can just use the app. They use the app. You go to the Walmart app and just ask for help. It's nothing with apps. Okay, so what about some negatives? Dealing with people. How, how are people not having this type of. The only, the only thing I could think of last night was, you know, people always say that, like, when Automation or technology. There, there could be a guy for them. No longer can be hired anymore. If you think about, let's just say, let's, let's have 10 people help people find where things are in every store. Oh, there's about 5,000 stores. Five, eight, seven, seven. That's 
just say 50,000 John. That's the only negative I can think of. But I guess you can. Anyone in uh, teams want to answer? Can I jump in here? Yeah, I think that uh, there's uh, something to be said for following your business strategy. You know, if your business strategy says we're a cost leadership firm, as Walmart would be, then they would be focused on making all their processes more efficient and ensuring that if they're investing in technology, it's going to reduce their overall cost of goods sold. So the way Walmart goes about this, they're investing in technology to make their inventory more efficient to also make it simpler for their associates to use. Let's face it, Walmart probably has quite a bit of associate turnover. I think that's pretty fair to say. So when we're thinking about this, it's important to kind of remember what is our strategy and to align whatever we're spending with that strategy. So if you guys go back ahead if you want. Um, I don't really know how much it costs them to hire all the workers that they have, but I do know that the year, the 2015 year, that um, Spent 10.5 billion on this They made 487 billion. That is not. That is all the money they made. That does not mean that you know they don't take away for uh, building buildings. They have to hire people. I don't know what the numbers are on that, but I do know that when you put that in perspective, 10.5 billion dollars is not that much compared to 400. than how much you're spending compared to their budget. I, I don't know. I feel like most of their, their biggest cost would probably be hiring workers. I think their biggest costs are probably related to the goods they're selling, you know, because they have all the costs associated with purchasing the merchandise, holding the merchandise, paying taxes on the merchandise they hold. Um, but, you know, kind of beyond that, I mean, you know, if they're spending 10 billion out of 500 billion, 
that's that's pretty minuscule when you factor in a lot of their sales are now done through their website. A lot of their sales are done, even their store sales in a lot of cases are done through their mobile application. So I think it's a great investment. I certainly agree. I think that's an excellent uh, kind of thing. I'm glad you had their total sales because I certainly didn't have it memorized. So I appreciate that. They're certainly publicly traded, WMT. All right. So, uh, for those of you who participated in class, make sure before you leave that I got your uh, name down on the extra credit sheet. I appreciate the participation. If you participated in Teams, I 100% got you. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so people are complimenting you in Teams, saying you did a great job. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to myself. If you guys will stay up there. Um, I'm going to go over what you guys did great. You guys had some good eye contact. I appreciated you all looking at the audience. That's a good thing to do. I think the slides look attractive overall. Um, I really like the image slides. We'll go to those. Uh, especially those two. Those were great um, because there's no words. I don't like a lot of words on slides, especially for a presentation. You kind of organically kind of you know talked about you know what these are. Uh, you had a lot of good audience participation. I think that's good. Uh, overall, you all spoke very clearly. Um, like I say, the kind of important because I don't have an external mic today. Um, future lectures, I'll certainly pick one up and uh, hopefully have a lot better audio quality. I apologize. You know, it's uh, kind of learning. You know what I should have and that sort of thing. But that's on me. Uh, so just whenever you're presenting, make sure you speak loudly. Probably a little bit more loudly than you think you would need to because you're wearing a mask. And uh, you know, can kind of muffle things. So you want to avoid that. Um, but you all did pretty well overall on that. Uh, I think it's a really interesting topic. You know, talking about what Walmart does with their uh, data collection. I think that's really interesting. Uh, I really like the IT spending that you got. Where'd you get that? Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Twenty. That's fine. I mean, like I said, it doesn't have to be 2020 or anything like that. Just as long as it's within the past 10 years or so. Yeah, that, that's really good. I like that. Um, I think you did a great job with that. Um, pretty good job of discussion. Um, so again, like I said, I'm not going to, for anyone else's lecture, I'm not going to you know, stop class and you know, say what you did well on and some things you can improve on. Um, if you will, go ahead and pull up your, uh, pull up your, what is it? Yep, the executive summary. I want to go through a couple things on it. All right, so you know, I uh, kind of looked through it. If you'll scroll to the second page, the 
Is there only one page? Okay. Um, so basically what I'm looking for with the uh, business report is that you have basically three sections within the executive summary. So you have a heading on each section, uh, three separate paragraphs where you kind of go through each of the different topics. Um, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Then on the second page you would have where you'd have any sort of figure you used, any sort of business case where you, you build the theoretical argument for why you would or would not invest in this technology as a company. And that's kind of where you'd build that. And then the third page would pretty much just be where you're talking about, um, you know, anything you didn't cover inside the executive summary. So if you want to go into more detail about Walmart's background, if that's what you're doing, that's where you would do that. Um, but, you know, this is a this would be a pretty good start. Um, if you go back to the slides, uh, I think like the third slide. So this is where I'm going to kind of move more towards constructive criticism. And again, you guys did well overall, uh, but this is really for everyone to hear. I think you guys are satisfied with the deal that I offered. So, uh, well, here's the here's my end of it. So basically, you know, when you're doing a presentation, you want to avoid having a lot of words on the slide. Go ahead and uh, tell me what size font that is. Is that like 20, 24, I would say, probably 20, 18. That's a little bit small. Uh, it, it's difficult to see uh, whenever you're doing this. I would say make 32 what you're targeting for. I wouldn't go below 28. So, you know, it could be difficult to see. You don't want to have too much text. Uh, you want to use bullet points where you just kind of have just a couple of things. And then you kind of organically fill that. So you don't necessarily read word for word what you have. Instead, you would say, you know, this is what we're going to talk about. And this is how it applies to the situation. You, you go through it kind of more organically. Um, yeah, so larger text, that's a big one. Uh, you kind of want a little bit long on the presentation. It should be between five and ten minutes if possible. Um, like I say, it's uh, today's fine. But the other thing is just make sure that you're prepared with, you know, good questions to, you know, have good audience participation on. Um, you know, so that'd be a good thing to do. Um, you know, this I think the rubric kind of lays out some things to have questions about. Um, so you want to have at least six questions. Now you don't have to use all six, uh, but you want to make sure that you're prepared with six questions minimum. Um, you know, if you're prepared with nine, that's probably better. Um, you could ask a question, and if you're asking a yes/no question, it kind of goes without saying that you know you're not going to have a lot of people saying stuff. So you may want to have more questions. But if you're asking more open-ended questions, you could probably get away with only having six. I would just recommend having a minimum of nine. Uh, but apart from that, you all did pretty well overall. So just to kind of, um, you know, make sure that everyone's kind of aware of how I'm going to be grading it. Um, that's kind of what I would say regarding that. Um, yeah, so the financial analysis, um, you know, I probably want a little bit more there. Uh, kind of show a specific cost and kind of, you know, go into a little bit more detail. Uh, I did like the numbers overall, though. So kind of keep that in mind. Like I said, you're trying to convince the audience and especially convince me of the importance of whatever technology is. So just kind of keep that in mind. Any questions for me? Um, if you have questions, if you ask questions like periodically throughout your presentation, do you want like the questions at the end of the presentation? Uh, either or. Uh, however you want to do it is fine. Um, like I say, I, I don't want to give you a very strict formula to follow where everyone comes in and does a very formulaic presentation. I want to avoid that. Um, so, you know, if you want to ask them organically, they did a good job with that. Um, you can certainly do that or you can do it at the end. The main thing is whoever's presenting is responsible to make sure that they go at least 20 minutes, no more than 25 minutes. So I would definitely recommend having more discussion toward the end so that you're not going to go above 25 minutes. Because if you go above 25 minutes, we have two people presenting. You either just stole time from someone or you made the whole class mad because they're having to stick around. So we don't want to have either of those things happen. Um, kind of hyperbolic there, but I mean, certainly, you know, it, it wouldn't be fair for one group to get 30 minutes and the next group to get 15. So great question there. Any other questions? You know, it can. It can be, so basically the rubric kind of says you want to spend five to ten minutes on the presentation itself where you're talking, you're going through the business case, you're explaining the financial case, and then after that, you know, you have discussion questions ready. So, you know, however you want to go about that, it's fine. Um, I don't really have any, you know, thing. 
there's some uh, different types of discussion that I say you should probably have. So two to three questions about the technological perspective, financial perspective, as well as the people perspective. You know, because you want to consider each of those things in any sort of decision. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? I kind of forgot your question halfway through, to be honest. <laughs> so that answer it. Um, graded more. Um, so let's see here. Discussion is 20 points. Presentation is also 20 points. So grammar is 10 points. Executive summary is 20 points. Financial analysis is 30 points. That's what I focus most on. Like I say, I mean, there's lots of different options you have for that. Um, probably a great idea would be to get a quote, you know, contact CDW, contact uh, Dell, contact HP, and get a quote for various types of equipment, get several quotes, uh, present those to class. That'd be a great option. It's not the only thing you can do. Um, you know, if you're talking about uh, different database software, for example, you know, get different quotes, get a quote from Oracle, get a quote from, um, you know, competing products and see which one makes the most sense to use. Um, you know, just something like that. You know, you got a lot of options there, uh, but definitely financial analysis is pretty important. You know, you want to make sure that it, you're doing a good job on it, um, you know, basically just make sure it's logical and make sure that it's applicable. So, you know, you, you'd want to make uh, sure that you're being very careful on what information you're presenting and how you're presenting it. Does that make sense? All right, any other questions? Uh, the rubric, it says your first one, it says preferably a real quote that can be said. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, basically, you guys did a great job. You found a company that's talking about using data. But if you're doing a topic, let's say you're doing a topic like data normalization, and you search and you can't find a company that's talking about using data normalization. Well, in that case, you would simply say, this is how a company could apply this. So you would basically make up a company, say it has 200 employees, say they're in um, the information technology services sector. So maybe they're MSP and they're providing technology services to third parties. And you know, throughout that, you'd kind of see this is how they would use data normalization. This is what benefits it would provide them. This is what I anticipate it costing in terms of labor hours. This is what I would anticipate the average salary being for the area that this company is located, that sort of thing. So you'd basically uh, kind of make up the company. Um, you, know, you kind of have some freedom for how you do that. Any other questions? Any questions in the uh, teams? Any you guys have any questions? No other questions today. All right. Well, uh, great job, guys. Like I say, uh, I'm going to stop the recording here.